Let's look how the droid pad from the last video looks like. Welcome back to the ever-growing video series on Droid the Universal TV Processor. In the previous video we have seen the elbow sequencer as a 4-track drum trigger sequencer. In this video I'll show you how the patch is built and we go line by line through it and I explain everything. If you haven't seen the previous video, I recommend catching up right now. Okay, so let's jump right into the patch. At the top there is as usual first the declaration of the controllers. This time I wrote a comment behind each one, what it is used for. The abbreviations stand for bass drum, snare drum, hi-hats and percussion. After that you can see a quite lengthy comment section. I've made it a habit to always describe at the top of my patches what all inputs and outputs and all knobs and buttons are used for. So let's jump to the actual content. First comes global stuff, which does not belong to any individual track. Everything starts with the internal master clock, which is implemented by use of an LFO. Its speed can be tuned with POT 1.2 up to 16 Hz. To be able to drive other sequences from this clock, I provided an output G8. The clock is then normalized to input I1 using a copy circuit. All other modules then use I1 directly as clock, as we will see below. This makes it easy to use an external clock without any changes of the patch. You just have to patch one into input one. Next comes a smart logic for the global activity knob. As we have seen in the previous video, the center position of this knob means normal activity and exactly that drum pattern should be played that is dialed in with the buttons. For that it is crucial that the activity is precisely at 0.5, not at 0.49 or 0.51. The circuit notched pot helps by artificially creating a small range around the center in which the pot always will return exactly 0.5. It reads in a pot value and if that value is near 0.5, it will output exactly 0.5 to its output. That value is then passed on via the internal cable pot activity. The mixer circuit then shifts the range from 0 to 1 into the range minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. That means that at center position it is exactly 0 and that way we can later easily add it to the activity knobs of the individual tracks. The result is then being sent into the internal cable activity. And the toggle button circuit is used for having the branches button toggle on and off. Let's go to the individual drum tracks. For each of those, there's one Algoquencer circuit. The trick here is that four Algoquencer circuits are seamlessly combined into one four-track trigger sequencer simply by sharing all common elements, such as pots and buttons, while defining other elements different for each instrument. First comes the bass drum. Before the actual Algoquencer, there's a notched pot for the activity knob of the bass drum for the same reasons as with the global activity knob. And now let's have a look at the individual parameters of the Algoquencer. First comes the clock from input 1. A clock is always necessary. A trigger at input 2 will reset the sequencer to the first step. This is optional but helps integrating everything into a larger setup. A press at button 1 1 re-rolls all previous random decisions and thus creates new random drum patterns as we have seen in the previous episode. No toggle button is needed here, since when your finger hits the button, its output will go to 1 and essentially create a positive trigger edge that way. And that's exactly what the reroll input needs. Branches, on the other hand, need to be set to 0 for branching disabled and to 1 for having two branches. We had defined a toggle button in the master section for this, you remember? By the way, a 2 would create 4 branches and a 3, 8 branches. Now comes the most important thing. The trigger output for the bass drum goes to G1. And accent will output a 1 during the full time range of a step that has an accent set. I send this to G2. So G2 will go to 5 volts while an accented beat is being played. This can directly be used as a CV for the according drum voice. The activity parameter now gets the sum from both the two activity knobs of the master section and the bass drum section. If both are in the center, they add up to 
which is exactly the value the algo quencer expects for neutral activity. Variation, déjà vu and fills are very simple to set. They accept a value from 0 to 1 and thus can be directly mapped to the according pods. Fill order is a number from 0 to 3 and defines in which bars which fills should be played. Here's the table from the manual. So by setting it to 3, we create a fill structure of 8 bars with tiny and medium fills in between and the complex fill at the end of bar 8. By the way, during a fill not only beats are being added but sometimes also removed. The idea is to have an audible change against the normal drum pattern. As you might remember from the previous video, while holding the accent button, you can edit the accents of the steps. So I've mapped just button 1.5 directly to this input. You can change this to a toggling behavior by adding a toggle button circuit for this. This would allow for a one-handed operation. The mute button is an exception. Here you specify the button and the LED and the algo quencer will toggle for you. Why is that? Well, there's a nifty feature here. You could map another global button to the input unmute button. A trigger there will unmute all tracks exactly at the beginning of the next bar. Please refer to the manual for details. Next comes the definition of four LEDs. The algo quencer has four outputs called bar LED1, bar LED2 and so on. At every given time, one of them is active in order to indicate the current bar. One bar is 16 steps here and is relevant for the branches and the fills as we've just seen. And the R registers give you direct access to the LEDs of the Droid Master's inputs and outputs without touching any of the signals going through the jacks, that is. In our case, we use the LEDs of input 5, 6, 7 and 8. The rest of the definition is quite long but boring. It's just the definition of the 16 step buttons and LEDs. While it's a bit of work to define them, each one, it gives you flexibility. You could, for example, have all steps of one track be next to each other in one long horizontal line, if you have at least eight P2B8s. The next track is the snare drum. This definition is pretty much the same as for the bass drum. Clock reset, reroll and branches are identical because they are part of the master section. Trigger and accent now go to the outputs G3 and G4. Activity and variation are individual for the snare drum and use pots on the controller 4. Now comes something new. The snare drum section has a pot for drum rolls. This is simply mapped to P5-1 and with that pot you can select the percentage of steps that should play a role. The roll themselves have two parameters. Roll steps specifies the number of beats the roll should start before the actual step. And roll count is the number of additional triggers that should happen in each step. So the values 1 and 2 here mean that the roll should consist of two additional steps with one extra beat in each. So altogether, instead of one, five beats will be played. The accent and length button are the same as for the bass drum section and muting, of course, now uses button 4 instead of 2. The rest, again, is button and LED definitions. Please note that it's not necessary to repeat the bar indicator LEDs since they would show exactly the same as those for the bass drum. Next comes hi-hat. I won't go through all the details of the hi-hat section now because it's basically the same as before, but I want to point out one difference. Here we have 8 buttons. Therefore we set the length parameter to 8 and repeats to 2. This means that one bar consists of 2 times playing 8 steps. That way one bar is 16 steps again and thus nicely aligned with the other 3 tracks. The percussion track again uses 16 steps. The only new thing here is that we make the exact voltages of the accent output configurable by pots 8.1 and 8.2. The accent output will then output the setting from pot 8.1 for steps with accent and that of 8.2 for those without. The idea behind this is that we can use this drum track for pitched voices like toms or congas. Of course we cannot use an output of the G8 expander here because that can only output 0 and 5 volts. So this time we use 01 for the accent output. And that's all. I must admit that this patch is quite long. It's more than 300 lines. But most of this is simple LED and button definitions and comments. And of course you can use my patch as a perfect starting point for your own custom made trigger sequencer. I hope you liked this video and that you were able to pull out a couple of interesting things for you. Thanks for watching.
Subscribe to my channel, please, and see you here next time. And don't forget to make great drums.